If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode... <laughs> this fantastical um, episode. I just like to hijack you every yeah. once in a while. Of Mind Pump. Uh, for the first 35 minutes, we talk about uh, some interesting things. First, we talk about my improved gut and my new level of awareness. Whoa. Wow. Can I punch your gut? <laughs> we talk about soft parents. <laughs> Don't be a pussy. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Coaching <laughs> moments. Uh, and then I do a little Thrive Market price comparison with uh, Whole Foods and other grocery stores. By the way, substantial amount of money. You save a lot of money. We are sponsored by Thrive Market. We do have a fat discount deal for our listeners. This is what you do. Go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump. Here's what you're going to get. You're going to get a free month membership. You're going to get $20 off the first three orders of $49 or more and free shipping. It's pretty awesome. And for an, the annual fee for the membership is 60 bucks, so you pretty much get that for free after you've shopped three times there. It's all covered. Then we talk about Justin's chewing gum. Yeah. Sounds like he made it or something. I, uh, I the, wish. The elimination diet and my uh, ignorant friends do not know what gnocchi are. Can you fucking <laughs> believe that shit? Did you just call me ignorant? <laughs> yes, I did. And then we talk about Adam's secret Organifi green juice Consumption. Uh, also, Doug's, Doug's he felt something. guilty about it. <laughs> he did. It's like like drugs You're in the corner. It's like, don't uh, mind me. We're also sponsored by Organifi. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code Mind Pump, you'll also get a discount. Um, oh, oh, and you, and don't forget to check out our show notes because we we have all of this written in our show notes. Thanks oh, to Jackie. Thank you. Good work, Jackie. Also, uh, I wanted to talk about our Build Your Butt bundle. It's one of our most popular bundles. I get a lot of questions about, uh, for especially from females, about building their glutes and how they do squats, they do deadlifts, they do lunges. You know, they do all the staple movements. They just want that peach. Yeah, and uh, for whatever reason, they don't feel their butt or it's not working um, for their glutes or whatever. Mm. Um, the Build Your Butt Bundle has a modification in there that teaches you how to connect to your glutes through particular movements, special movements. And what we've done is we've taken MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, we've combined them, and then we've added this modification. So it's all designed around, and it trains the whole body, but it there's- It wakes a, up those sleepy glutes. Getting you connected to your glutes so that when you do do your squats, your deadlifts, your lunges, you're going to get glute development. You can find that at mindpumpmedia.com. And now we get into the questions. In this episode, I answer the following questions with my co-host. We talk about what is the best course of action for someone? And us. <laughs> exactly. My bad. Who has to lose a lot of body fat? Should they do cardio or should they do it without cardio? The second question was, with all the talk about cardio ruining metabolism, how would an endurance athlete go about avoiding this? Something wrong with that question. Yeah. We fix it in this episode. Reframe it. Then we talk about the new updated nutrition guide that's coming out. We have a former figure competitor who's asking about it because she wants help with her nutrition. And finally, the final question, how do we balance entrepreneurship with our romantic relationships? Of course, we have the wizard, Adam Schaefer here. Mm. He gives some wizardly advice in this episode. And You're then, welcome. And then I think we're giving out some uh, some t-shirts for our, our review winners. Yeah, we are. Excellent. Uh, we had 13 reviews this last week and we're giving out four shirts. Whoa. So the winners are... Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Huxley Rourke, Nick Sids, Taylo24, William 5H. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. You know what? I, oh, what are you going to say? I was just going to say, I forgot to thank everybody. Not too long. I think last week I asked for this, and we got quite a few people that did. And if you didn't hear this, I appreciate, uh, or I will appreciate, if you guys head over to our Facebook, Mind Pump. Uh, we're active on that now. We're putting a lot of energy into growing uh, the Facebook page. And so uh, we started getting people coming over there and leaving five-star reviews. So uh, any help uh, is greatly appreciated. So if you guys make your way over the the Facebook, make sure you guys like, subscribe to the to that, start following that page. And if you got time, uh, drop us a five-star review on there. Check this out, right? So after I did my two um, parasite you know, antimicrobial cleanses and fasts and all that stuff. My gut has been, dare I say, bulletproof. Whoa. What? Like, 
It has been. Can we get sued for using that yeah, term? Yeah. Um, Doug, can we say bulletproof? I think, I think so in this context. In this context, oh, it's okay. fine. I don't know. He's, he's no. got the rights for so many things. I, now, um, I, I exactly. <laughs> no, my gut has been like so amazing to where I'll eat things that'll normally cause problems, and they don't. Not only does it not cause problems, but I, I'm pooping amazing, and I feel oh. great. I feel amazing. Oh. So here's the problem with that. Here's the learning lesson. I already that. know. You're probably flirting with the boundaries. It's not flirting with the boundaries. It's it's that I didn't realize how much of my motivation was tied to this external source, this external mo- this external symptom that I would get to the point where, you know, uh, and that's not good. It's, it's, it's fine because it helped me, but it's not good in the sense that now that my gut seems so good. Wow. I don't feel the same. What great awareness on your part, because you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to just contribute to this right now. I, in the four years we've all been together, you, I've heard you mention candy like two times or three times ever. And all of it's been recently. Mm-hmm. Mm. I've never even heard you say like, oh, I want some candy. But it, you, because in the past, I think you would just say, fuck that. I want nothing to do with that because yeah. of how you probably feel. But that makes a lot of sense now because you've probably been feeling just so a, good. You're like, hmm, like, I can handle this now. It's yeah. just a new, it's a new, it's a new situation. And so now because I'm in a new situation, new context, all of a sudden I have to, it's, it's a different challenge to me. So um, so that's what I've been doing. Like I've been eating more, like if we eat out, I'll eat the, you know, the bread sometimes, you know, more often or I'll have the dessert more often and it's extra calories. So now I'm working out and I'm feeling strong. So that's, there's that old pattern, right? That old reinforcement right, right. that's coming in. I'm not having gut issues. So I don't have that now that's reminding me constantly to eat a particular way. Mm. And so this weekend I'm sitting there and we went out to eat. We ate at, um, Outback. Which, uh, you know, we're no affiliation, but remarkably good steak uh, at Outback. Just want to make sure I say that. Oh. Um, but we're eating there, and I'm having the steak, but I'm also having the Sponsor bread. Sponsor us. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. Yeah. So, <laughs> I just want to got awesome records. blooming onion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. I, don't, I don't know. So anyway, yeah. we're, we're eating at Outback, and I'm having the bread, and I had the French fries, and afterwards, I'm like, "Hey, let's go get some dessert or whatever." Damn! And I'm thinking Do to myself, and I'm thinking to myself, well, "You like, go, girl." <laughs> exactly. And I'm, and it's like, you know, it's funny because I, I even thought to myself, like, uh, I had a conversation with Jessica, and I'm like, "Man, I'm really off the rails." And she looked at me funny because that's not my terminology. That's how I talk about these things normally: <laughs> on or off the rails, or on or off. The, I don't talk about them that way. And she's like, "Wow, did you just say that you're off?" like the rails, like you were on something and now you're off of it. And I'm like, this is crazy. It's, it's, and I started to realize like, wow, because I'm having, I'm not having any gut issues. I don't have that external force or reminder. So I'm not as consistent as I was before. And so I'm having to re reevaluate everything so that I'm, you know, going back to being intuitive like I was before without that external reminder. So it's a new challenge, as strange as that sounds. And, and I, I, want to, I want to figure it out now before that external motivator hits me again, which will. And inevitably, if I push it long enough, I'm sure my gut is going to have a reaction. And then I'm going to be like, oh, fuck, I should have known. I don't want to get there. But I also want to make sure that that's not my motivation. You see what I'm saying? I want to make sure I'm doing this because it feels good in other ways. Very, it's an interesting position to be in because it reminds me of how, how it is to be motivated by, you know, I don't want to get fat or I want to build muscle or, you know, all the other things that we tell people to, to try not to use as your motivation. Mine was just uh, a big part of it was that was the gut issues. Right. Big thing. You know, we just, we got done, just got done right now talking to Chris Cresser and Man, uh, the analogy that he gives of the the dirty window mm-hmm. windshield, right, is such a great analogy because, or at least for me, I connect so much to this because for years, uh, you know, I ate all of this stuff and I know that my body started to express psoriasis and I never connected that to food. I just thought like, oh, this just sucks. I'm going to, you know, it runs in my family or something. I'm going to get it. And I remember when we first went on the ketogenic diet, how amazing I felt how much better my skin, my hair, everything was. And it wasn't until I actually went back the other way and reintroduced all the stuff that I used to do did I really realize, holy shit, like until you clean the windshield off completely, 
you don't realize how how all these little bugs and things that are hitting it are I really know. affecting you yeah. until you completely clean it. You know, you and feel the real impact. Of right, it. and it, you know, so much of that uh, made sense to me because I'm like, how many clients have I talked to, and they're like, oh no, I'm fine. I don't have a gluten intolerance, or oh, I I eat all those foods and I've got no problems, or I drink those energy drinks all the time. And I was that person. I get it too. But it wasn't until I completely eliminated it, and for some time, you had to clean the windshield. Yeah, I had to completely clean the windshield, and then when I reintroduced this stuff, I was like, holy shit. It was like all these signals, everything. I have headaches, can't sleep very well, on the toilet right away. It was like, how is this possible that I didn't see any of this stuff before? But it just goes back to how amazing our bodies are at adapting. Like, of course, if you're going to continue to poison it every single day, the body's going to get resilient. It can be like, okay, let me figure this out. Let me get better. It'll figure out, figure out a way to control symptoms, but that doesn't mean that the da- that, you know the damage isn't happening. Right, yeah. right. And how many people are going through this? You know, um, people that... In, if you're listening and you're a, a growth minded person, like if you are in search of being a better version of yourself every day, that I, I implore you to go and try an elimination diet and then then have at it. You know what I'm saying? Just run run an elimination diet for a month or so. I know our guide's coming out soon and in there Sal talks all about it and I think it's an incredible guide. And those of you that already bought the original nutrition guide get it free. So it's coming and I think it's a, a great place for people to start. But regardless if you think you're you think you're completely fine eating the way you are or not, I implore everybody to at least go through that process because I think once you do that it's much easier to make the connection to these foods that it reminds me of the 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 story of the man that was born with one eye uh, sewed shut, you know, born with one eye sewed shut, lived most of his life one eye open, and someone came to him and said, "Hey, man, you're only looking through one eye. You can see through the other one." He's like, "What are you talking about? That's crazy. I don't believe you." And then he goes over and he he pulls out the stitches and opens his eye, and then for the first time he realizes all the stuff. All, you know, all the stuff that he's been missing. And that's really, really what, you know, a process like that does. It's what fasting did for me in some ways. Mm-hmm. Elimination diet does it in some ways. Being active does it in other ways where you start to realize all the things that you're missing and how much better, you know, life can be. Uh, it's it's pretty crazy. And, I, you know, I look at some of the issues that I've had with my health as, as blessings. They totally drove me to learn some of the stuff that I've learned and to develop my my sensitivities to what intuitive eating is is all about and what you know how to work with people because i had to deal with it myself there's nothing like personal experience to teach you i mean it's it's crazy to say that because you also you know you don't want to say hey if you don't work out if you don't eat right you can't learn and teach these things i'm sure you can but when you've do, done it to yourself you understand it differently you know what i mean yeah. you know it uh, on a, on a whole nother level so right. So anyway, that was so. What you, you do this weekend? You just hung around, or what? Yeah, you, we you hung, came down here for the. Did you, did you get a chance to see the people at the boxing? I missed everybody. Just real quick, I was with my kids all weekend. I came in to record an intro for the Rob Wolf episode because we forgot to record an intro for it. Yes. Um, but uh, we duplicitous cock face. Duplicitous. <laughs> duplicitous <laughs> I can't even. What is that word? Duplicitous. 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 What does that mean? Uh, I looked Does that it mean up. like two faced? Two. No, 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 no. It means two uh, cocks. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean that at all. I looked it. I looked it up before I wrote it. That's like. Really cool. uh, let me get it for you because yeah. I just I just had it up actually. Mm. I wanted to make sure that I understood the definition before I actually wrote it. Yeah. But uh, when he said that, I also counted how many times that he said cock block. Yeah. So I, thought, so yeah. I was going to do a. I was going to do. A, Box my signal to my brain. Right, I was gonna do. I was gonna do a a either. Uh, it means treacherous. How did you get to it he, faster than he's, me, bro? He's a come on, wizard, buddy. Dude. I had it already in my history, and you still beat me to <laughs> it. How the on, fuck bro. did you do uh, that? Uh, come on, bro. He's got some secret like Siri things. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I've I've hooked up my brain. I have a brain internet <laughs> interface. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there it is. <laughs> I'm watching porn while I'm talking to you. Both of you beat yeah. beat me you too. Got right? implants. Yeah, is what you, got. you know why? Because I had to sit here and sound it out in my head like five times before I did. Do you know? That's how my brain works. Google is one of the best uh, spell checkers in the world. That's how I spell shit now. I just uh, start yeah. entering in Google yeah, and it's I like, do the same. Yeah, yeah, but that can get you in trouble sometimes yeah, you too. You can do the wrong because site. I don't know how many times I've done that and it gives you another word that's not the word you're looking for, but it's really close you to you the spelling. Really yeah, fast. you just glance at it. You're like, oh, close enough, and then I get it. It happens to me all the time. That is a 
exactly how I get caught up because a lot of times I'll just be writing what's on my mind. I don't take the time to spell check it. If there's something I can't quite get to, I throw it in Google real quick and then I just post it. And then I, and then I get somebody going like, uh, you do know that you said this. And I'm like, of course, all the fucking keyboard warriors, they got to come get me uh, yeah. for my spelling all the time uh, or always. my grammar, right? Because yeah. it's off. Like that doesn't make sense, Adam. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So this weekend, I, had, I was with my kids all weekend. My daughter had two soccer games, and I love, absolutely love watching my kids do shit. Yeah. Even if their te- if their team sucks, because I'm going to tell you, <laughs> my daughter's team has not won a single game. Oh god. But they're oh. in the so they're in the under ten group, age group, but everybody on her team is team is like seven or eight. And the other teams that they're playing are like nine and ten. Yeah. That's a big difference. Right. When That's you're happened a kid. to my oldest, yeah. And they're just getting smoked yeah. by these bigger girls to the point where so I watched the game the size yesterday. differences are ridiculous. Dude, huh? I'm watching the game. My daughter wants to play goalie. She's like, Oh, I want to be goalie. So like, okay, fine. So they're playing the first half, they get just destroyed. The other team scores like eight points. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. soccer, it's so soccer. <laughs> yeah. So then the coach tells his team, You're yeah, not allowed out. to score. What you're gonna do is just pass and try to keep the ball away. So then the second half comes. Finally, my daughter gets to play goalie. Of course, this half, they're not even trying to go- score. They're just passing it around. So my dad, are, <laughs> my daughter's there. standing there with like this too big of like, you know, goalie shirt on. So it's kind of like down to her <laughs> knees. She's got these big gloves on with her little ponytail. Yeah. And she's just standing there watching the ball. Just looking. Now and that's, I, now and that, I'm like, she's so cute, but she wants to play. Now that's a fascinating part. topic yeah. right there. I, I don't know if I would like that. I, I think, didn't. I think I would I'm go. Like, I, I think if I was the opposing coach, I would, I would call a timeout, walk over, and say, "Hey, listen, motherfucker, yeah. I don't want any charity." Don't patronize or, us. Yeah, like I'm trying to coach and teach these. Crush people. our team. Yeah, right. <laughs> you like, guys are better. Fucking beat them. Bring it on. I Steal can, their soul. I got a lesson for that. That is, there's yeah. a what a fucking problem. Why would you do that? I, because why? Would I so, doesn't make any sense. Because the parents to me. are soft. That's yes, why. I actually heard there's one a of, lot of soft parents. So I'm there. sitting on the sidelines. Right, game is over. Kids are, you know, shaking hands or whatever. And I hear one of the moms and she's like, oh. she's like, they need to change this. Oh she's God. like, these girls are not going to want to play soccer anymore because they, they they get their butts kicked by these team, these girls that are bigger. And I'm thinking in my head like, listen, mom. That's fucking is, life. This is a game. This That's is a life. Les- this is a learning lesson for your kid. Yeah. This is a great opportunity for you as a parent to coach. This is what I, I had a coaching moment. I'm in the car with my daughter. We're driving uh, after after the game. We're driving home. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, what would you think of that game? And she goes, they scored like 10 points. I'm like, yeah, they, they, they killed you. And she's like, they were a lot <laughs> bigger than us. I'm like, yeah, they're bigger and better than you. They're a lot, lot more skilled. I said, but what happened the second half? It looks like they didn't really score that much anymore. And she goes, I think they weren't trying to score. And I said, well, what did you think about that? She's like, well, I think they don't want to score because they were beating us so bad. I said, yeah, but what did you think about that? I said, what makes you, does that make you feel bad or does that make you feel good? And she's like, well... She's like I I don't I, she's like I kind of feel bad that they that the coach told them not to score. So I'm like I'm thinking in my head I'm like these kids aren't idiots. Yeah, they recognize it. Right. They know what's going on. Yeah. Like they'd run all the way to the goal and then they'd kick it back and start passing it back and right. forth. Right. We I'm had like the now same, you're just now yeah. you're just poking fun at everybody. Yeah, we had the same problem my oldest like <clears throat> going through that and then like they would stop, you know, they would stop all their efforts. So they take all their best players out and all that and like patronize the kids and all that. And they feel that it, it, now I have the opposite problem. So, uh, my youngest is very physical and he like gets after it. <laughs> the little just amazing, like slide tackler, like, <laughs> but he goes for the ball and it's totally like legit, but he makes like all the other, like, I just listen to all the parents, you know, and like have them, they're all scoffing, you know, every time he'll do it, he like takes some kids out, you know, and he'll, he'll hit the, he'll hit like a perfect shot on the ball, no contact on, on the kid. And then they're like complaining, oh my God, you know, that. and I'm like sitting right next, like this time I was sitting in the game right next to like the opposite uh, teams, you know, families and all that stuff. <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm like, yeah, I never get after it, you know, go after the ball. And then like some poor, you know, kid like just eats it, you know, eats grass and he takes the ball and he, he, he goes and he scores. I'm like, yeah. Like, and then like after that, I just keep hearing this, like, you know, real subtle, like comments in the background. Oh my God, he's pushing and the, and they're, they're just ignoring the fact that like their kids are like pushing too. Right. You know, and they're like being really physical, but like they're like singling out, you know, because he's like doing it better. 
I, re- I remember, I actually, there's a video, my mom has it still, of me playing soccer and slide tackling the fuck out of every kid. I got, actually got that red, was me too. I actually yeah. got red carded for yeah. it because I just learned how to do it. And then it, it was, was like, your move. oh, I, everything. It's legal. Like, no reason. Yeah. There was like no reason for me to do it, but I was doing it. I, like yeah. Every kid, I, every it's time so the ball fun. was near me, I'm slide tackling. Like, once you, as a kid, when you're, if you play soccer, I played soccer for seven years. And when I, when you learn how to do that, it's like the coolest trick ever. You know, I didn't even teach him it. He just started doing it. I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, like I was so proud. That's hilarious. Yeah. No man, when I when I watch my kids play sports, I think of as I'm watching. Well, first of all, I'm a proud parent, and I'm not proud because my kids are doing anything spectacular. I'm just just it's just my kid. You know, I love my kids, and I love watching them, and it makes me emotional every fucking time they do something. <laughs> literally every single time. Yeah, I have a great time it's watching so true. them. That's why. I and, laugh. and 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 but when I'm when I'm watching the game, I'm also making mental notes, and I'm thinking to myself of uh, like you know coaching moments for me as a father. Like, what am I going to take from this, and how can I take advantage of what's going to happen in this game and talk to them about what's going on? And if they win, what are the coaching moments there? And if they lose, what are the coaching moments there? And I'm going to be honest with you, but the important, the, some of the most important coaching moments are the losses. By far, those are the times when I can sit down with my kids and talk to them about why they lost. And most of the time, it's because the other team was better or the other kid was better. If they want to win next time, yeah. how they can do it, how they're gonna it go, usually yeah, involves more work, yeah. right? It involves more work. And, I, and I'll point it out. Like, if, if, like with my daughter, I told her, I said, you know, I said, why do you think the other team was so much better? And she's like, oh, they're older and they're bigger. I said, they are. I said, but they're also better. Why do you think they're better? And she's like, well, they play more. I said, so if you want to get better, what do you think you need to do? She's like, we should practice more. I said, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I want them to equate hard work and effort and practice with right. getting why, better. Why can't we connect that? Why yeah. can't we say, okay, they're not just better because they're two years older. They're better because they've had two more years of playing the sport that you're playing at currently mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. And if you actually put that much time in what it takes, like why not break it all the way down and be like, let's unpack this. Like, okay, yes, they're beating us because they're older than us, but w- why is it really? It's not because they're age. Like it's not, especially when you get older, when you, with the difference between a 35 year old, and a 37 year old in the real life doesn't really matter, especially if the 35 year old put in way more work over the years than the 37 year old. Mm-hmm. So the age doesn't really matter. It's that, oh, that at that age, okay, we're talking about kids, more than likely those kids have got two more years of practicing the sport. And so the message is, listen, hon, if we can put in as much work as they've yeah. put in that are older, we can be as good and as sometime, they are. And it's good to know that there's people that are way better than you at things. Right. In life. Right. You know, like, why should we stifle their excellence? Dude, I would get so pissed if I saw that. I don't know how, that, yeah. that type of stuff makes me, that's like the trophy thing, dude. It's it like, does, and I'm doing? watching it, and I'm just like, oh, man. Like, like who what? decides that? It's, it's just a fucking it's, thing. Is it like a league thing, or is it like a coach that coaches no, the parents? No, like I, think, I think it's like a standard. Like, that's what you do at this age, is if the other team is just oh, like pouncing yeah, on you. they're just being soft with their feelings. I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, like I understand taking out your, you know, maybe taking out the player that scores all the goals because you're so far ahead. That's, that makes sense. That's what some, that's what no, professional I, no, teams do. No, 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 100%. But the yeah. whole strategy of, oh, yeah, let's not don't score. score. No, no, don't score. Yeah, you're not trying no. to be an asshole That's a great it. opportunity for the team that's already better to now sub in players that are less, you know, haven't, aren't as talented or haven't played as much and get them some playing time. Totally understand that. Totally fair. And it, it'd be healthy and good to teach them, and still, but still go score. Like, why would you? That yeah. to me is so absurd that they would do that, man. Yeah, yeah I mean, like I said, there's a lesson, in, and there's a lesson there. That, lazy parenting. That's what that is. It's lazy parenting. It's parenting that people don't. They don't want to take the time to sit there and explain it like you had to do with your daughter to mm-hmm. break it down. They just want to be like, oh, it's because they're bigger. Yeah. And then the other thing too is every. <laughs> this has happened a couple times now. At the end of the game, when they bring all the snacks, and it's usually, you know, <laughs> shitty snacks for kids, yeah. which I'm always like, oh, whatever. Yeah. My kids now are conditioned to just ask, to look at me and ask, which always looks bad because they'll be with all the other kids right? and the parents are handing out like, hey, do you want a donut? And do you want a donut? Here, do you want a donut? And then my daughter looks back at me and she's like, Papa, can I have a donut? And I'll look at her and be like, no, I think you've, you know, you had, you know, something else earlier today. And she'll be like, okay. And she won't have it. I know the parents, and I can, I can feel the parents looking at me. Like, oh, it's that fitness parent. <laughs> <laughs> Telling their kids not to eat. The, Dude, you know, I haven't dinner. had any donuts. That's ridiculous. Donuts. People are bringing donuts? A box of fucking donuts. Fuck you. And they're, that's, and, it's, and, and I've, I, that's I've, like insulting to and me. And it's, I told, who was it I was talking to? I was talking to, 
I was talking to someone about this. I want to say it was my mom, but maybe not. And I was trying to explain to them because they'll just say, oh, it was just one cookie. And I'll say, hold up a cookie to your hand. And then they'll hold up the cookie. And I'll be like, okay, so it's like half the size of your hand. Now hold it up to a a seven-year-old's hand. Now imagine eating a cookie in proportion to your size as big as you. Would you ever eat a cookie that big? No. Yeah. It'd be massive. I said, that's why. Your, it'd be the yeah. size of your face. Yeah, but it's because I w- I'll go in and I'll take. It I'll, counts as one. Because yeah. I'll break one in half and I'll be like, here, you have half. And people are like, why are you only giving them half? I'm like, because they're tiny. Right. There's no reason for them to have this massive <laughs> right. this massive cookie. Right. They, they ran around for an hour and literally only burned yeah. 200 calories because yeah. their body's so little. Yeah. It doesn't take that much fuel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Knucklehead. Dude, it would be like eating something this big. <laughs> right. You imagine right. that shit? <laughs> you know what? Speaking of, I meant to, so somebody, pie. somebody messaged me after one of our last um, episodes where we talked about Thrive Market and they're saying, hey, what you guys actually said that there are foods that are cheaper on there than actually Whole Foods and kind of called me out on that. Yeah. You were the one that had told me that. So what, dude, you- I, so I actually did it this weekend. So um, I normally don't, I pay attention to the prices of foods. But I'm not, it's not like a huge, huge priority for me because A, I can afford it and B, quality is very important. But since having this sponsorship with Thrive Market, I've been buying all of my kind of like non-perishable type things like my, yeah. you know, like like my paleo pancake mix because sometimes I'll do that with my kids or there's certain types of cereals I'll buy or ghee or, you know, macadamia shaving nuts creams, or shaving creams or whatever. Yeah. I'll get it through Thrive Market. And so I actually went through and started comparing prices. So I'm saving, I'm saving like 150 bucks a week uh, in some cases by shopping at Thrive Market. So, so I, that means it's got to be like a, a 20 to 30 plus percent. Yeah. Some difference. things are 50%. A lot of 33%. Some beginning. of them are half. Some yeah. of them are half the price. Wow. No joke. Yeah. So I went through. So the Paleo Pancake Mix, uh, Thrive Market, 479. Uh, normally you'll find it Whole Foods wherever else anywhere between six fifty to seven fifty. Wow! So that's a big difference. Uh, my kids will sometimes I'll buy them this treat, Pirates Booty. That's the name of it. Unfortunate name. Why would you even name anything that? <laughs> mm, Whatever. Pirate Booty. But it's these, <laughs> yeah, these non-GMO. I like, that was a cereal. Yar! <laughs> no, it's these like little cheese snacks or whatever. And I'll buy this bag of these like individual packets. Thrive Market five forty nine. Uh, normally seven sixty nine. I've seen it as high as as uh, eight sixty nine somewhere else. Wow. So just to give you an example of the difference, uh, ghee. So I love to use ghee for cooking and stuff. It's clarified butter, delicious. Check this out. So the the thirteen ounce bottle of ghee, fourteen ounce. Uh, uh, Organic Valley, yeah, thirteen to fourteen ounce bottle. Uh, so Organic Valley is the brand that I get. Thrive Market ten ninety five. I can never find it for anything less than like fifteen or sixteen dollars. Yeah. So just to give you an example, significant of, man. Yeah. Huge, huge, and then there's that gum that you always buy. Yeah, I buy that. Talking about uh, mainly for fasted breath. You know, like <laughs> I swear, I get home and Courtney's like, oh, like I I tend to fast like uh, for a long period of time till like two or three o'clock. In the you get that ketone breath. Get that ketone breath. Oh wow, you get it. You notice the difference in your breath when you're fasted. Mm-hmm. Oh shit. What yeah. about you, Sal? I don't. Oh, I don't. I don't. Know. But I should ask my girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, babe. She's the one that presents it to me more than anything. So yeah. So I like to the, this pure gum, uh, which um, I, I I like to buy because it's more natural and they use natural ingredients. And so I just keep that in my car. You know, if I feel like you know my breath's a little bit off. How's so. the taste of it? It's not bad actually. Uh-oh. I mean, it's more just like a minty kind of a. Flavor it doesn't taste like there's obviously it tastes like there's not a lot of sugar in it, so it's like you got to kind of work through the the gum of it. But yeah. um, once you get to chewing it, it's not bad. It's much better than the you it's know, better the than the alternative. Shit, who was mean? it? Who was it that we were talking to that talked about how, or maybe I read this somewhere, maybe it wasn't someone we talked to about how chewing gum can actually cause bloating because it sends this signal to the the stomach like the whole digestive process has started and you actually get bloated from it. That's so, super fascinating. So there me. could be a problem with the chewing gum, but the problem is separating that from the fact that you're chewing something with artificial flavors and sweet, you know, and like sweeteners and colors and all that stuff. So mm. so like uh so my girlfriend, uh she if she chews like Trident or whatever, we've already connected now. She does get that. She gets the the gut issues mm-hmm. and sometimes skin issues from it. Oh, wow. She doesn't necessarily get it from like the pure gum mm-hmm. and the other types of sources. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so you've got to separate the two, but I could see the rationale where you're chewing and not swallowing, mm-hmm. you know, food. But, but for people who may not produce enough acid, 
in their stomach like Justin like me who gets you know get, uh, you get uh, re- acid reflux acid and reflux, stuff yeah. chewing gum might help it, and, and of course yeah it's another Does it sort help of with a you? band-aid you know if, like in a crisis moment because it's like either like Tums are on hand at that point or you know I found that gum actually helps with that on on you know so, like some level so yeah like did you catch yourself did you catch yourself just kind of naturally gravitating to that or like when did you actually connect that um, like oh shit every time I send to have these issues I all of a sudden chew gum and it makes me feel like how the fuck recently is- yeah a couple like maybe like two months ago um i had just because of the breath and, and i've been experimenting more with with um you know fasting <clears throat> which when i'm fasted obviously my you know i'm suppressing a lot of this like acid reflux i don't really have as many problems so i've been i've done elimination diet um which i'm trying to pinpoint like exactly okay which you know food group is it i'm i'm tending to think more now it's probably a combo uh, and i'm trying to figure out probably. what that combo is um, Could you imagine if it was dairy? Dude, I know it probably, you know what? My guess is it cheese. Probably is. This motherfucker loves so much <laughs> cheese. <laughs> it's like a denial that it has nothing to do. He's I like, know, I know. Oh, we keep talking. Oh, we just had Chris Kresser on here. Just like, and we're like, okay, normally it's the things that you eat Listen. the most of. It's probably. Isn't it an intervention, Adam? <laughs> okay. Like, Dude, <laughs> fucking clean your windshield off, God motherfucker. Damn it. Damn it. Wipe your windshield off and you're going to see this big ass cheese bug hit your windshield. <laughs> like, so oh, in the fuck. meantime, I'm band-aiding my problem with gum. <laughs> okay. In short. And so what's great about Thrive Market <laughs> uh, is. <laughs> yeah, so it's twenty nine eighty eight. So that's the normal price I'm going to get for the it box. For the box because I'll have a box in my car that I keep, and uh, I get it for nineteen ninety nine. So it's a huge savings. So anyway, that's another good. You savings. do save a ton yeah. on there, yeah. <laughs> dude. You would starve to death if you couldn't have dairy, bro. It's like you're it's, uh, like I don't know quality of life. You know, this, like, <laughs> I don't know, dude. You know, so <laughs> you know what though? Like that that could be like a challenge or something. Like for me, like uh, for a month, you know, maybe like just go like or maybe a couple of weeks and just like go without all dairy. all dairy i'm trying to remember i think i'm gonna have to do that I'm i gonna, had i had a little bit that so, sucks like so i don't i that, never have because i'll do it now i never have dairy but i had mm. a tiny piece of cheese the other day wow that is i fucking love cheese was it a nuclear bomb in you it though? was just it was like i don't know how to explain it sex it's like yeah. i had sex for the first yeah. time <laughs> yeah wow. i ate it and i was like uh, wow i'm God trying to remember it. what was the hardest for me to let go of when i was like eliminating stuff in my diet what was really really tough ice cream yeah maybe yeah probably i uh, once you know it's funny once once the ice cream went um once like uh, candy went once like bread and pasta went once i got rid of it for long enough i actually didn't you don't want it yeah, yeah. I, I i didn't really and then i still mess with it don't get me wrong i still have these bouts of like you know what I haven't had a candy in forever. I can have a candy if I want one. I'm a grown up, you know. Yeah, and then I go, yeah. and then I go have one, and then I'm. Who easy, tells me what to do? I'm quickly reminded of why I don't anymore because it right away affects me, and so it is kind of this blessing in disguise now, where because I I did eliminate it out, I don't really crave it, but yet I still have those moments where. I interjected into my every, life. Every time we go on a, like some kind of a trip with a Paleo <laughs> FX or right. a Spartan race or wherever, every t- it's like a tradition now. Yeah. yeah. Adam and Justin are going to order pizza, yeah. and then the next day, Adam and Justin are going to sh- suffer. Are going to shit yeah. all day and talk about suffer. it. We're going to eat your, your stinky ass broccoli no. that you know. And then I the always <laughs> hey, can we just God, can we can the, we the entire house is a huge house. Hey, why don't you say thank you? Yeah, well, somebody thank thinks you, about uh, you know, but our yeah, our, our people that came in to do an interview with us. Come on, like, dude. What, what is the smell? Come on, bro. I I'm always the guy. I buy the broccoli, or the vegetables. I cook it for everybody. Come on, you got to be happy that you eat. <laughs> so this was one of Taylor's. Thanks, Dad. This was one of Taylor's first trips with us, right? And it was so funny because Taylor and I had went out, and I don't remember what we did, but we agreed that like, okay, Justin or Sal have to go do the grocery shopping because we already ran our we already ran the last errand, so we were staying home. So they went right, and and we were t- and Taylor and I were talking. They get but just or Sal gets back with all the groceries, and he comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, what the fuck, dude?" He's all, "I thought Sal was going grocery shopping." I said, "No, he did." <laughs> he goes, "Bro, he just bought like broccoli like and water. Broccoli. Yeah. It's like broccoli and water and like and like two other things. That's all we have." Like, <laughs> I thought he was going grocery shopping. I was like, "Oh, you haven't had Sal go grocery yeah, shopping yeah. for you before." This is how it goes. This is exactly how it goes. Maybe you'll get some macadamia nuts in there and some yeah. olive oil. Other than that, that's kombucha. A, yeah, maybe yeah. some kombucha. That's Thanks, it. man. But this is these are our meals for the next three yeah. days, Sal. Like this is all, we get. and now all we get is this like fucking you know four foot tall by or three 
three foot but diameter fucking bowl of broccoli yeah. inside of our refrigerator and the whole house stinks like broccoli. It's your breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Like, ah. I gotta take care of my boys. I will say though, if it wasn't for you, I we wouldn't have had any vegetables. Well, yeah. not only that, True. but it, it wasn't until we started hanging out did I really try start making these like vegetable dishes where I would yeah. just sit. And it's all eat. centered around the vegetable, right? You know, I, I never, I, I never really did that before, and I, I, I have to give you credit for really introducing that to me, and it really helping and changing my life because. I'd never thought I could sit down and have a bowl of broccoli, like a huge bowl of broccoli and actually enjoy it because I never utilized things like ghee and butter and the olive oil and balsamic and Mm -hmm. different nuts Mm -hmm. and things to kind of really bring out like a, like a good flavor, Mm -hmm. flavored tasting bowl, you know, where I always just steamed my vegetables. And the reason why I ate vegetables was because I needed to. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I, I need to eat my vegetables, so I got. Well, oh, I to- crave Brussels sprouts as a result oh. of our trips. Like I, I'm always like we're introducing that probably like two, three times a week. Ever since yeah. that, the, ever since that recipe that Doug introduced us to when we went up to um, where was that we were at that trip? Uh, uh, that was that Cal- was the one uh, off the river. The yeah, Red yeah. River. Where, where was that at though? Right, that, Rus- the Russian, Russian river. Russian river. Yeah. yeah, when we were up there, that's the, when we almost got flooded. That yeah. was the and I, I posted before. Down. That was the you know balsamic and the uh, walnuts and oh. So oh Man, yes, yeah. and bake. I'm like, man, uh, I've never. That's a that, that's actually a, that's a meal. It's a staple dinner for Katrina and I. We a lot of times when we we both get home, if we like we're dialed in right now, we're like, hey, you know what? Let's stay. We're leaning out or whatever. It's like that's a great meal. It's super satisfying. It tastes amazing. I feel so good after I eat it the next day. Like such a simple thing, you know. Dude, yeah. you want to talk about a dinner Friday? You just reminded me Friday night. My mom, uh, my mom invites us over for dinner. And my mom tells me, your dad's uh, your dad's barbecuing. My dad is in my family. He's like, this is what he's known. He's known for he's a few things. He's the grill master? Yes. Yeah. He's the grill master. And That's my if, title. if you eat over my dad's house when he's barbecuing, you're going to eat like a lion. And what mm. I mean by that, like a lion, like is like you just eat a lot of meat. Yeah. So yeah. we get there, and I'm not exaggerating. He makes bone-in ribeyes that are this big. I don't know where he <laughs> finds them. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, you put on... So we had ribeye, sausage... Then my mom made gnocchi, which is fucking amazing with the homemade sauce. What is that? You never. Whoa! You never had gnocchi? No. No, me either. You neither one of you had gnocchi no, before. Oh man, introduce us. Is it Italian, Asian? What is it? Wow! I, I can't believe this is so weird sounds to me. Sounds Japanese, huh? I can't believe neither one of you have ever had gnocchi. No. So it's okay. Never even heard of it until you just said it. So I feel so, like we're walking into a joke. Say it one more time so I remember it. Gnocchi. Gnocchi. So it's spelled G N O. C C H I gnocchi. So that G N makes it sounds like sound. Gucci, kind of. So they're basically potato starch dumplings with maybe a little bit of flour. So they're like this round, and you cook them, you boil them, and then you put sauce on them. And they're so like when you eat them, they like melt in your mouth, and they're fucking amazing. Where does it come from? Interesting. I told you, potato. No, no, no. no, no. Oh, I mean, like, uh, like it's what a, culture? It's Italian, bro. Oh, it is Italian. Of course. Mm. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't sound. It ends yeah, in a gnocchi vowel. is Italian. It ends in O. Yep. Okay. No, no, I, gnocchi. Oh, yeah. o or I yeah, is always yeah. Italian, right? Always. Yeah. But um, anyway, so she made that. We had, And then we had some green beans from the yard and all these other... Oh, fuck, man. I ate so much food. Wow. I, yeah. wish, my, I wish my weekend looked like that food-wise. Yeah. Yeah. I, li- I lived off my, my green juice for the weekend. Did you? Uh, well, I went you do? Out, you, you, tra- you were gone, right? Yeah, I took. A, I, I did miss out on the uh, box and burn thing, but I, you know... Shout out to those guys. Right. Yeah. Great job, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. no, it was cool. Had a good showing for that. I, and I, I missed out on uh, the MP fans that were here and stuff like that next time jackie but, was here i saw jackie how, how you, you doing, doing jackie yeah one of our favorite yeah, fans. jackie she uh yeah no she's she helps us put together the show notes and she's super badass um but i went out i had this plan for like a month two months in advance uh to go see my buddies and i now have to do this now where i because mind pump were going so much and we have all it seems like there's always something either here or we got to take off somewhere I got to set out these these dates to make sure that I spend time with people that are really important to me. And this is this is a for sure challenge in my life that I'm trying to get better at because mm. these are very very important people in my life and right now we are building probably one of the most important things I've ever built in my life. So it's definitely a challenge that I'm sure you guys even deal with yeah. uh, with family and friends. And so, you know, I've gotten good now about uh, scheduling it way in advance. So this was booked like months in advance. And all it was was just going out to see my buddies. 
Uh, but I do know that you know when I go out there that it could be drinking beer and soda and and eating whatever. You know, you know what you're in for. Yeah. So you know, I I, I decided like okay, I'm gonna just like live off the green juice until like it was like until I felt like I needed. Did you introduce them it's to a good it? Strategy. No. You know something that I I learned a long time ago with my best friends stuff like that. They know me better than anybody. They know what I'm into. Uh, neither one of them listen to the show or any of that stuff like that. They don't like Mind Pump Adam. They like Adam who they grew up with. And so I don't force any of my... They, they prefer We Love to Hate Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. They, they, That's a throwback. They, yeah. They, yeah, they, <laughs> Shout out to the OGs. <laughs> they, they prefer everything before all of that even. Uh, and so really when I go see them, I try not to talk about the business or anything related to it, which unfortunately for me is healthy choices in food too, which kind of sucks because one of my, my best friends is, uh, and I, I don't remember the, 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 the disease that he has, but it's what affects his, his sleep where he, oh, right. I remember you he has me. that really rare case. Uh, it's super rare and it's where people act out their dreams and stuff. Hmm. And like 90% of the people that have that actually end up getting Parkinson's. And so, you know, I used to try and force feed information to him before and tell him to eat the certain sucks, way. Man. You can't do it. You no, know, they you have can't to be willing to. So, yeah. So I was like totally uh, undercover drinking my green juice. I, you know, I shook it up and then go out to my car and, and, and put it together and then <laughs> and then kind of sip on it while we're sitting there. Oh, watching. Shame. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> I did. I felt like that. I felt I, it was really a funny situation for me thinking like, but I, it's that's also me getting better at understanding boundaries with other people and what they want and they don't want. I think mm -hmm. we get this question asked all the time on the forum, like, how do you guys tell people that, you know, that your family and they just don't want to listen to this and they need help with that. And it's like, unfortunately, you can have all the answers and knowledge and, and mm -hmm. experience and some of that. But if they're not ready to receive it and they don't want it from you, uh, you're probably, you're probably better off not force feeding it to them. And then, and my best way is to, uh, to to show through my lifestyle, right? That's it. I, I talk about it once or twice, and then I just demonstrate it. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That's mm -hmm. to me, and that's it, right? It's just it's as we continue to age, right? As we continue to age, and they choose to golf and fish and become more sedentary, and I continue to be more of an active lifestyle and stay strong and fit, and you know, take care of myself. You know, all I can hope for is that you know they look to me for advice when eventually that time does come where it's like, hey, I need help with this, and then then I can introduce it. Yeah. So no, I did not. <laughs> Introduce the green. Juice Are you guys still doing the the Christmas blend with the green and red? So I am out of my red. I can't wait. I know sh you talked to Shauna. She's yeah, supposed yeah, to be, be hooking us up, sending huh? us uh, more of our stuff. So I am down to just my green, and I, I was doing the Christmas blend, but I'm out of the red. Mm. Mm. So, but it's definitely a, it's a lifesaver for me now. Like I now, that's like my go to when I travel somewhere, is I bring those. Because I have the ready to go packets too, right? The mm. little you just tear them open and then throw them in like a water bottle and shake it up. So I, you know, Katrina's always got four or five in her purse. I've always got a few in my car for those, those exact situations where it's like, you know what, like instead of, so the way I look at it is like when I'm in a place where, you know, I, there's going to be a lot of choices to eat that probably are not ideal. And I, if I got something to drink that like that, that's what I like. It's got a good flavor to it. Mm -hmm. It's easy. It does satisfy me. And so I kind of use it like that to hold me over until later on, until I can get my hands on something that's a little more balanced. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Bring it. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. First up, Z Strength Journey. What is the best course of action for someone who has to lose a lot of body fat? Cardio or no cardio? Ooh. <laughs> this is a good question because no. Yeah, I, I no mean cardio. for sure at first, no cardio. 100%. Like no doubt in my mind I'm telling this person no cardio if what? you uh, I know, right? Just whoa, are you kidding me? More than likely, okay, and of course Everyone, every, there's there's always exceptions to the rule. Everyone is uniquely different, but more than likely, if this person has a lot of body fat to lose, uh, they're probably not moving a whole lot, especially in comparison to what they're consuming. That's just how you got there. So we're talking about conventional 
uh, cardio. We're not talking about like neat. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what I would address. And so with someone like this, I would highly recommend a wearable tool or use your iPhone to get kind of collab- get an idea of your activity and movement in the day. And from there, I would make incremental goals. And I typically use 10 to 20%. So let's just use hypothetical numbers. If you um, find out that you're only stepping 5,000 steps per day, which is pretty common to fall somewhere in that range or lower, uh, if, if that's where you're at, then I'm going to take that number, 5%, multiply it by 20%, or 10%, depending on how sedentary, and nobody, mm-hmm. you know better than anybody else how sedentary you are, and I would incrementally move them every week up by 10 or 20% in steps. Most of the time with that, it's just not sitting down you know, as much and like watching TV or whatever it is. Like mm-hmm. it, it just adds up, and you don't realize it until you actually track that and right. measure it. Right, and, and, and just so you get an idea to put that in perspective, if, you were, if you're one of the average people in America, which only step about four or 5,000 steps, okay, it doesn't. It, that means all you got to probably add is a twenty-minute walk every day. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. That would. That's all that person. I would start. Which them is off. plenty when you're talking about people who need to lose, you know, 70, yeah. 80, 90 pounds. That's or more. Pl- <laughs> yeah, or more. That's plenty of movement. The, the The way I look at it when I get a client like this, or when I'm working with someone in this particular situation, is step one. I'm trying to improve their strength and mobility when I train them. Those are the focuses. Now, I, the reason why I'm trying to improve their strength is because I know that that's going to directly impact their metabolism in a way that's favorable based on uh, according to the goal that we have, which is weight loss. I know if I can get their metabolic rate to increase in terms of how many calories they're burning, that's going to help us in the long term. It's also more than that, though. It's going to protect us in the long term because when you're trying to lose a lot of weight, Okay, let's just say 80 pounds. I think that, in fact, I think this guy actually said 80 pounds in his question. When you're trying to lose a lot of weight, you're looking at a long time uh, of work. You're looking at losing 80 pounds over the course of seven to 12 months, yeah, probably a year. Remember, you didn't put the 80 pounds on right, overnight. Right. So yeah. we're, we're looking at about a year's worth of work to lose that 80 pounds. And what we don't want to happen over the course of that year is for you to lose the weight, but also slow your metabolism down. Hmm. And I know that strength training, proper strength training, is going to speed up the metabolism or at least protect us from those adaptive effects where your body slows down because losing weight is not the hardest part about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, A lot of people think losing weight is the hardest part. It's not. It's keeping it off. Keeping it off is the hardest part of this entire uh, scenario. So I'm trying to set us up for success in mm-hmm. the future, not just trying to get you to lose weight now, because really that's a simple formula. If we, if that's all it was, it's a simple formula. Well, because if you do it too quickly, I mean, you're going to get to that point where like every little like movement that you don't do throughout the day or, you know, one additional, you know, like two, three hundred uh, calorie amount is going to affect your body dramatically. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's just something to consider. Like you're going to be in a really fragile state that you've created um, because your yes. entire focus was to just shed weight as that's quickly a, as possible. That's such a great way to put it. You you do. You do put yourself in a bad position where now you've lost the 80 pounds, but your metabolic rate is slowed down to the point where in order to keep it off, you have to maintain this really high level of activity and these low calories, which long term is, is very difficult to do, especially considering it's already a lifestyle change to begin with. So I want to protect that by building strength. Now, as far as nutrition is concerned, and Adam has talked about this in the past, and I really, really like this concept in the sense that uh, mm. it's super effective. I've already been utilizing it with some of my own clients. And it's just, it's something that I've, that I've done in the past with some clients not realizing uh, really the structure behind it. And Adam put it really eloquently in the past where you don't take anything away. You just add things. Mm-hmm. So when I'm looking at their diet, uh, rather than saying, don't eat this, don't eat that, what I'm going to say is, you know, keep your nutrition how it is. Don't change anything, except I want you to eat two large servings of vegetables every single day. Or I want you to drink this much water every day or whatever. I'm just adding things to their diet. And what that ends up doing is, A, it gives them you know, nutrient-rich foods, which they're, they may not have been getting. Uh, number two, 
Is it going to help them eat less uh, indirectly? It might. You know, if, if this person never ate, you know, large servings of vegetables and now I'm directing them and saying you have to eat two large servings a day, that may get them to eat less of other things. Right. Plus, they're going to start, rather than having that negative connotation of You're building taking a palate away, for it too. Yeah, they're building a palate for it. Yeah. And somewhere in the, you know, somewhere along the way, I will start taking things away, but that's where I'll start them. So mm-hmm. in terms of the best course of action, yeah. that's where you want to start. And even when you take things away, you're more, you're, it actually starts like, or for me, it starts like this. It's first I add things that I know that their body is missing. And normally, just like Sal said, it's somewhere in those lines of adding vegetables or adding fiber into the diet or mm-hmm. getting healthy fats in the diet or even sometimes protein because some of my, my females uh, under consume protein. So whatever it is, I, I'm going to add. And then after I add, even before I like completely take away, I exchange. So now then the next step normally as is sugar is n- normally grossly over consumed by almost everybody. Uh, most people are consuming well over 50 grams of sugar a day, which is more than enough for everybody. And so normally what I do is have them exchange some of that. Well, now instead of us getting 150 grams of sugar, you know, get rid of 50 grams of sugar, but now let's have some fat instead. Mm-hmm. So they're actually getting just as many calories as that they were getting before. You're just helping them make better choices so they're not starving the body. Between coupling that with the uh, increasing your steps by 10%, which is literally if you took 5,000, that means you're only adding 500 steps more per day, which is literally, like I said, a 20 minute walk or less. And then on top of that, adding three days of strength training a week. Oh man, talk about setting yourself up for long-term success. Like that is how you start to, you start off on your that's journey. That's the formula. So now let's talk about what not to do. Let's right. Okay. Yeah. Here's what you don't do. Watch Biggest Loser. Yeah. yeah. You don't go- Become Jared from Subway. You know, I want to lose 80 pounds, <laughs> so I'm going to- I'm going to- I'm going to go on a- For more on than a, one reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go on a 1,200 calorie diet. You don't want to all of a sudden include you know 30 minutes of cardio every single day. You don't want to start restricting things right off the bat because, uh, again, you are setting yourself up for so much failure in the future that your chance of long-term success has become uh, slim to none. So do the things that we said in terms of you know the course of action. Get stronger. Add things to your diet. Slowly progress yourself. Um, increase activity through your, just your regular movement and you'll have a better better chance. You know, of this question makes me wonder how many actual people that we have that need to lose mo- more than 50 hmm. pounds or more. It'd be interesting to, 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 to create some sort of a group or figure out how many people that we have in this exact same boat? It'd be very interesting. I think to, it's a mm-hmm. it's a small but decent percent, but I also think we have a lot of trainers. Do you think it's that small? listen to us? Oh yeah, that have clients. That, yeah, that, that are because, dealing with this because this is a tough one to coach. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, what do you do? Like, because the urgency is there, right? Yeah, and especially as the coach, you want to provide you know the the results. You want them to happen, and you want them to be happy with it, so they keep continuing along that process. But it's a fine line because if they really get into it, they can start like overdoing it with the exercise. They can start starving themselves significantly. And right. I've had clients, uh, you know, in that uh, state of mind where you really had to kind of rein them back in and like let them understand that simple fact that like we're setting ourselves up long term, not for this short term, like uh, what I look like in the mirror. Well, especially with really overweight people, because they can, they'll see the the greatest change at first. Exactly. Right? Or the, like somebody who's it happens 80, quickly. someone who's 80 pounds overweight consuming arguably, you know, somewhere between three to 6,000 calories a day. If they cut their calories in half, start running on or getting on a treadmill and moving, dude, they'll lose like 15, 20 pounds in a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you try and tell somebody like that, that, hey, you're doing this all wrong. They're going to look at you and be like, Fuck you! I'm down 15 pounds. I know what I'm doing, yeah. but they have it's no for me. It's they working. have no idea what they're setting themselves it's, up for. It's funny. I used to pride myself when I was a trainer in the early days, long time ago, where I would pride myself on my ability to motivate people to work hard. Mm. So I would get these clients, and they would lose weight, and they keep it off as long as they were with me because I was such a good motivator. Right. But what really, uh, you know, where I really learned my lesson with this is where, you know, I went into management, didn't train these clients anymore, and then they, and then I'd run into them two years later, three years later, and they they're back to where they were before or worse, and it was a, it was a reality check. Like I didn't do, sh- I didn't help them, you know, and it wasn't because they're they're lazy. It's because it was all based on this external motivation of me getting them to that space, and what happens when they don't have that, and it's not gonna last forever. Right. All right. Our next question is from. Ryan Jason Baxter, with all the talk about cardio ruining metabolism, 
How would an endurance athlete go about avoiding this? I you know, am cardio question. I'm so glad that he asked this question in that way because I want to I want to correct him. Okay, so he's asking the, about why about cardio ruining his metabolism, and he's an endurance athlete. So what's he supposed to do? So I want to be clear here. It's not ruining your metabolism. Your metabolism is doing exactly what it's what it's supposed to. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's managing what it's you're just, doing. It's just adapting. Yeah. And if you're an endurance athlete, you want your body to become more efficient right. with its calories. Yeah. So as an endurance athlete, is your metabolism going to slow down because of all the cardio and endurance training you're doing? Of course. Yes. Is that a bad thing? Depends on the context. Yeah. If your if your uh, if your goal is to lose weight, keep it off long term for the rest of your life and be able to eat more food, um, then yeah, it's probably not a good thing. If your goal is to be a more effective endurance athlete, be able to run farther, faster uh, with your marathons or your Ironman. Yeah, you want to manage all your reserves. It's a good thing. You don't want an an inefficient, you know, you don't want a body that burns a shit ton of calories and then go (laughs) run a marathon. Yeah, right. Because then you're going to fuck yourself. You're going to bonk. You're absolutely going to fuck yourself. So, Keep that in mind when you're training for a specific goal that it may be counter to what may be a good thing for your lifestyle uh, or for long-term longevity. Well, I, it, it's again, I, I like to talk about this with sports in yeah. general, like I, somewhere, and I don't know where we made this connection that like we sport, sports with health. Yes. Yeah. It, I don't couldn't, know what, it couldn't be uh, further yeah, from the truth. Exactly. Like there is, there is nothing, well, I shouldn't say nothing. There is very little that is healthy for us that is connected to sports. With, and the, I, with that high level. And of I know that that's going to ruffle some feathers, me saying that because I know there's a lot of people that are in good shape that yeah. play sports it's like you're being good at a sport means that you've practiced the same movements over and over your body's become very efficient at utilizing the food that you're feeding it which is the opposite for someone who's trying to change their physique but that's not your goal like if your goal is to be an endurance athlete nothing is wrong with that you're an athlete you want to be good at that you're not trying to change that you're not trying to fuck with your metabolism you're trying to work with it in order to be better at your sport but where people get caught up is when they think that their sport is a good way for them to be in shape. Right. That's where we go wrong. When you go like, hey, I'm going to sign up for this obstacle course race because I want to get in shape. Yeah. Bad idea. I'm just going to play basketball every Bad weekend. idea. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I love basketball. I'm going to play basketball to stay in shape. Bad idea. Right. And by bad, it doesn't mean that it can't work. Doesn't mean that you can't play basketball and have some shape to you. It's that it's not the most efficient yeah, way. Stay looking like that. It's not the most efficient way for you to get in shape, which is the reason why you see a lot of weekend warrior basketball guys and athletes and people that do that that they don't look great physically and stuff like that because it's their bodies become so, efficient. So at let what me give doing. an example of what Adam's talking about. Okay, let's say you're a marathon runner. Let's say you're a high level marathon runner. You run incredibly fast. You can run long distances. And you think you're in shape. Like, I'm in shape because I can do this. Take that same athlete and put them on a football field. They get their ass kicked. Does that mean they're not in shape? For football, they're not in shape. It's a different type of shape. That's right. So performance is one thing. Health and fitness are is a separate thing. They can mesh. There is crossover, but yeah. one does not necessarily mean the other. And the no. and the higher you go level wise, the further those could become apart. Correct. So you can definitely and I and I was just talking to Katrina the other day about wanting to pick the basketball back up and and, and start to play a little bit. And I might, I might play two to three times a week uh, intermittently with my weight training and, and it be a way for me to burn some extra calories, play a little ball because I love to totally different. Now, if I said, you know what, I'm going to get, I, I'm going to make a run at this, maybe going pro thing. Like I've been told I'm pretty damn good <laughs> at this and I'm going to dedicate myself to becoming a great basketball player that directly conflicts. Yeah. Now you're going to start making compromises, right? That directly conflicts with my long-term health goals and strength goals and aesthetic goals. Those are not, they do not align with each other. Can they mesh? Yes. But there's a give and take relationship that happens here. Sports are not the best way for us to get in shape. It does not mean that I'm telling people you can't have an obstacle course race in your life. It doesn't mean you can't run a marathon every now and then. Totally okay. 
But well, if it's you're, the expression of your peak performance. And so if you're always trying to, to achieve peak performance every single time, like your body, like it, it's just going to try to make that more efficient somehow. And so, you know, it's going to affect your performance. I mean, if, if this is your only goal is, is to get in shape by like, you know, challenge your body at its, its highest capacity, where do you go from there? Right. You know, it's, it's tough to, to maintain. And I want, I want to be clear, like there's nothing wrong with endurance. I know sometimes we come across as like, it's not that, but yeah, no. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with endurance. It is a it is important. Uh, it is you know being healthy. People means, really enjoy it. Being healthy means you have yeah. a certain level of endurance. But when we look in, when we look at the context of modern life, okay, if we look at modern life, what are the problems that modern life present us with in terms of uh, for our health? Some one of the problems is there's easy availability of food, especially highly palatable food, so food that tastes really good. And our daily life is pretty sedentary. So we have this problem of not burning a lot of calories and eating a lot of calories. And the reason why, one of the reasons, because there's other reasons, but one of the reasons why we like resistance training so much is because in the context of modern life, it's the best form of exercise. It speeds up your metabolism. Endurance training doesn't. Endurance training doesn't speed up your metabolism. Only resistance training does. So when you're looking at, again, in the context of modern life, Resistance training speeds up the metabolism. It'll directly combat the problems that you're going to have with modern. Don't you uh, guys find life. it funny how some sports that we people have a really easy time connecting this and other sports people just are in total denial about? For example, we all know that training for a boxing match or an MMA match can be really healthy. Someone can get in great shape running, boxing, sure. getting doing all these ab exercises, like lots of great benefit. The moment they step in a ring and they start fighting and getting punched in the face, everybody can all agree that probably not the healthiest thing for a body, <laughs> yeah. right? It's obvious. Same thing for football. Football, you train like crazy, you do all this great cardio exercise, strength training, so that all pretty good for the body. Get inside, you start slamming helmets into each other. Probably not the best thing for the brain, right? Mm -hmm. So, we, But then all of a sudden when we talk about running or we talk about maybe soccer or basketball or something like that, like all of a sudden we lose this connection that maybe that's not, the, I mean, what, what happens to your joints long-term? What happens to your skin? What's going on when we push the body and we stress it all the time like this in the sport? It's not ideal for the body. Why, why, why do we have to deny that? And it's, and it's okay. Okay. I did one that I think is one of the worst sports for people, which is bodybuilding. Like I I'm, could totally connect and relate to people that love to do these things. Like, mm -hmm. but the reason why you don't see me in the circuit still, because I never really cared about the sport that much. I totally recognize that I'm not, I was not the healthiest I was in my entire life. Sure. My body looked really cool. It looked really fit. Like I was really healthy, but I know damn well that the, the amount of time and volume, the amount of hammering the weights that I was doing, the extreme dieting that I was doing, the supplements, the steroids, all the things that I'm taking to look like this and be like, fucking A, that ain't healthy for my body. Mm. It's so nice. That would be so naive for me to think that way just because physically, just because I look on the outside mm -hmm. fitter than what maybe I look like right now. It's no different than the person who's way out of shape and decides to, decides to pick up a sport like marathon, endurance, OCR, or any other fucking sport for that matter. And they're, they're looking at themselves and they go, well, I'm in the best shape of my life playing this sport. That doesn't mean that it was the best path for your yeah. body. Right, right. And that's still the pervading like shared thought process right. everybody has uh, because it is. It's so visible. You know, a lot of these sports bring out like such a, an impressive aesthetic, a, you know, a physique to go with it. But they don't really realize, you know, Dude, how much is taken away from health. Do you know how many of these high level female athletes, especially in endurance sports or OCR sports or CrossFit. Do you know how many of them, are, you know, young who just don't even have a period anymore? Yeah. Their, their bodies don't even operate or function normally anymore because they've pushed themselves the limit. They've, they're able to perform at a very high level, but that's a very uh, clear sign. Mm -hmm. That's probably not the yeah, best for you. Teetering too far. Yeah. But I wanted, I do want to say if you are an endurance athlete, Yes, you have to train for endurance, which means yeah. you're going to have to do lots of endurance training. So if you want to be the best at endurance, yeah, you, you got to train. Which no, I That's think it. there's nothing wrong with that. No, we just fine, yeah. You know, for sure, Justin, and I, cool. Justin yeah. and I played a lot of sports growing up. And I, still, I yeah, and I wouldn't give that up to for the world, you know, but because it taught me a lot of life lessons and everything else that sports provide. But um, you know, yeah, just just know that you know have that where that mentality where yeah, this is something that I'm experiencing right now, but there's ways that I can optimize my health in a better direction.
Trisha Peitch is asking when we're coming out with the updated nutrition survival guide. She is a former figure competitor and wants help with nutrition. Uh, so, so the rest of the question, I read the whole thing, and she wanted uh, help with counting calories and macros, and she wanted specifics. And so, two things. First off, the new the new nutrition guide is coming out um, soon. We that should was, be really. That was nice it. of you to pick that. We normally avoid questions where people ask specific things about themselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she. Uh, so it's going to be coming out soon. It is not going to give you specific. Yeah. It's not going to give you specifics. We got rid of the uh, macro counters. No, it's not going to give you macros and- That's half the problem. It's not, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's, that's right. half. That's half the- Especially- There's free I really love that get, we did that, by espe- the way. Especially yeah. for somebody who comes from the world that I come from, that, which is the- That's why I picked this question. The competitor bikini and bodybuilding world is like- you know, part of part of our problem is is our addiction to counting and needing to know exactly where the the, the macro. You've already proven you've done that. If you've competed, you've proven to yourself that especially you can, figure they right, get shredded. Right, right. If you if you've done this, you've already proven to yourself you can weigh and count food. So and and if you feel like you need help with your nutrition, well, that's probably part of the the help is getting away from actually having to do those things to be able to connect to your body and be able to read the signals that it's probably already given you. Now that being said, you know it doesn't mean that I don't think that you should track. I don't think you oh, should. So that's an important part. I don't. I don't think you should follow somebody else. Somebody else's prescription for your body. Hmm. I think you should track your food while you're following some of the principles that you're going to find out when you get the nutrition guide that's coming out, which doesn't tell you to count or do anything like that. But you can track your progress that was to help better hmm. connect you to some of the things that are happening. Like, oh wow, look. When I eat X amount of gra- gar- blah, grams of carbohydrates, this is the way my body responds. I notice I get inflamed. I notice I feel lethargic. I notice my sleep's off, whatever. Oh, wow. When I increase my fats by this many grams yeah. and reduce this by this much, I notice that, right? So you're just paying extra close attention to all the body signals and just understanding like what those signals are and like, you know, how to interpret them better and then how to alter that, you know, for a better mm-hmm. result. So the, the the nutrition guide that's coming out talks a lot about intuitive eating. It talks about the concept, what it means, the signals to look for, but it also gives you techniques uh, that you can utilize to get yourself to the point where you can become more and more intuitive with your eating. And I, and I want to be clear when I say that, becoming more and more intuitive, because it's not it's when you become process. intuitive, yeah. there is no end. Uh, there's, it's not like this goal, like, oh, I'm intuitive. You know, mm-hmm. now I'm an intuitive eater. It is a process, but there are techniques in there. And, and counting and tracking is one of the techniques, but there's many others in there. And the, typically the way I coach people through this process, and that's what you're going to find in this guide is techniques and, and kind of a step-by-step process to get you there, is typically I'll take someone and I'll have them I'll start add. I'll start adding certain foods um, to their nutrition. Tell them to start to target certain things. I'll have them track their food, but only so that we know where they're at. Right. Just so I know how many grams. It's a point of, per- of reference. Yeah, point of reference. Then we'll start to manipulate things a little bit, but really I'll start to manipulate things so that I can show them that we can get their body to change. And also because I like to undulate, I like to give them yeah. some days where there's low carb, some days where there's high fat, some days where there's you know vegan. Because now we can start to tease out mm-hmm. how the body's reacting uh, to all of these different things. And then the next step is either uh, either I have them try a fast to kind of break the chains of food and feel what real hunger is and learn those signals. I'll have them uh, do an, maybe elimination diet if we're having more gut issues. And then we slowly start to implement intuitive days. Uh, but here's an important thing to consider when you're doing your intuitive days, uh, when you're tracking your food is it many times initially turns into cheat days. This is what happens. I'll have clients that I'll have them track and then I'll, I'll be like, okay, you know, two days a week now, I want you to eat intuitively. You know, pay attention to how you feel. Still write down what you're eating so we can pay attention, but don't, don't aim for anything. Just kind of eat based off your body signals. And inevitably it turns into a cheat day because you went from tracking to not tracking. So it feels like I can just eat whatever I want. And when that starts happening too much, then we go back to track and it's this kind of back and forth uh, between the two but until we get to the point where we can become more intuitive. But this guide that's coming out is really focused on that. The goal of it is to give people a guide to help them get to the point where they don't have to track and count, where they can just eat uh, and eat in a way that 
the, the side effect is their body is naturally lean, naturally healthy, and it's not something that they have to sit there and add and count things up. It'll it'll be out this week, and you know, also shameless plug right here because I think this is the, for this person. If you're not already in our private forum, this is a definitely a, a place that I highly recommend you go. We have de- we have people that have competed and literally are in sounds like the same boat that you will currently are in right now. Uh, we have lots of people that are going through it still. I've been through it for, for a, long, a long time ago. We have eating disorders. We have all kinds of stuff that are of people inside that forum, including you know, doctors, nurses, trainers, all kinds of pro- professionals. And p- if you post something like this question up there, you'll be blown away by how fast you get a response and other people that have been here and have all kinds of great tips. So alongside with the guide, uh, I highly recommend the forum for these reasons, I, for sure. And we haven't talked about the forum in a long time, but you know, the three of us are in there on a daily basis, not and on top of all the other people that are helping each other out. So between the guide and the guidance that you would get inside the forum, I think you're going to be just fine. Definitely. Next up is Callie Johnny. How does entrepreneurship affect your romantic relationships, and how do you find balance between the two? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a hard question. Wow. How do you like that one? Hit, wow. hit me right in the dick on that one. Mm. You, want, you want to go first? Yeah, dick it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's uh, because of the fact that when you're an entrepreneur, you can't just leave work uh, at work, right? You're going to bring it home with you. This is This is a fact. This is something that... Well, either it's inside your head as you're operating throughout your day or you're cleaning your house or you're doing things with your family or uh, your significant other. Inevitably, there's going to be some kind of um, something, like some issue or maybe it's something good, but it's like your mind is 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 very focused because it has to be. A, like I, there's all these things I need to consider um, when creating a business or, or operating a business. And so, um, you know, there, it, it, it creates conflict sometimes because, um, there's urgency and there's a lot of things that you want to accomplish and, um, you have to just be very, um, good at communicating with your significant other and, and make sure that they know for me, a lot of times it feels like I'm just ignoring, um, you know, ignoring them and, um, that, that's something that I have to address right away and be like, look, I, right now what I'm doing is this, and I have to explain exactly what I'm doing and then understand that I need to remove myself for a bit and spend that quality time, um, you know, with my family. And, um, so it's hard, man. You have to just start to understand what it takes to, um, you know, keep, keep going forward with your business, but then set, boundaries and and figure those boundaries out and express those boundaries to your significant other. And then you guys are on the same page and understanding mm-hmm. like, okay, this time right now, that's why I set up an office. That was one of the best things I ever did because I just told, oh, I, I don't told know you my, had an office. Yeah. I told him, and I, th- this is like this year I did that purposefully because um, there I, was, I follow you on Instagram, so I knew that. You knew that, yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> I like all your dick. pictures still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're my friend. I do. I like yeah. them all. Uh, you, you just like real like yeah, in your yeah. feed. You just like like. Yeah, like he doesn't even like look yeah, at it. It's yeah. terrible. Whatever. But I, yeah, I read your stuff, Justin. Yeah, man. You know, it's like that. That really helped because I could just walk downstairs and I go in my office and I and I'm like, okay, let me know. You know, when I need to come up and you know when when's dinner or when. When are we like tackling the house and cleaning or, you know, what are the, what's the boy's schedule, you know, this and that. But I would have designated hours where I'm just in there in the office now. So mm-hmm. that that's helped a lot. What about you, Sal? Well, or, or Adam? I, <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because I've, I haven't worked for anybody for, uh, let's see, since I was 22. So it's been, it's been a long time. It's been 16 years since I've ever worked for anybody. And I was just thinking about this other day. Uh, the other day, I was having a, a conversation on entrepreneurship, and I had to really th- kind of th- think back to what it was like to have a boss and to ask them, you know, if I can go on this trip or if I can do this or I have this idea. <laughs> yeah, like getting or, permission. Yeah, yeah it, w- it was really weird. And I, I kind of consider myself. Um, unemployable now almost yeah. I, I don't know yeah. how I, I don't know I, if it'd be well, I totally get you bro you know yeah. what I'm saying like, I don't know how, how yeah. hard it would be really yeah, hard be terrible employee yeah. for me to work for someone today so it's almost like you know with with my girlfriend it would probably be worse for her 
if I worked for someone than working for myself because it would suck so bad that it would probably <laughs> affect my relationship worse. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And I love what we do so much. Um, and I have a better balance now than I used to. In in the past, I would I would absorb myself so much all the time that I would be oblivious to kind of what was going on around me. Like if my kids were sitting next to me watching TV or cartoons, then I thought I would use that as an ex- opportunity to work because they're already mm-hmm. occupied. Yeah, they're zoning out. So yeah, I'm so, zone out. so now I'm going to zone out. So then everybody's just in their own world. Yeah. And what I do now is, you know, I have set times that I work. So when I have my kids with me, so I have dual custody with my kids, so I get them 50% of the time. So when I have them, on the days I pick them up from school, I'll pick them up. When they're doing their homework, I'll do some work. So that usually gives me about 30 minutes. Then it's when they go to bed. So my daughter goes to bed at 8.30. That's when I spend time with just me and my son. Me and him hang out together till about 9.15. He goes to bed. Then I give myself 45 minutes to an hour to to do my work if I have work to do. Mm-hmm. And I'll sit there and I'll make the time to do my work. In between, I'll uh, I'll check my phone once an hour is what I give myself to check because I have to check the form and stuff like that. But I don't. I try not to spend too much time. I have to almost regulate it. Otherwise, I can get lost in it. Yeah. And that's probably what you, you as as an entrepreneur, especially if you're a successful one or you're one that or you've been an entrepreneur for a long time, you probably love what you do so much that it can totally take over. Yeah, it bleeds through everything. So I would say just set yourself parameters and stick to those parameters. Otherwise. <laughs> it's going to start to, everything starts to kind of melt I have, together. I have a few thoughts on that though. And I th- I think early on when the the girls that I dated in my early 20s, because of my uh, neurotic personality when it comes to building a business and being an entrepreneur, I'm sure I drove most, if not all of them away at one point. And I'm actually totally okay with that. Uh, it taught me a lot. I don't of, want you anyway. Well, <laughs> what I, what I realized was this and, and, and now, now that Katrina and Katrina and I had been together for over six years before Katrina, the longest relationship I ever had was two years. And before that was like nine months was like the, the top, like most girls couldn't handle me longer than nine months. And, it, and I, and I'm okay with that because what I realized during that time was that this was a this was definitely who I am and, and so something very important to me. It was very important to me that I, I, I built my dreams and then I went after them. And if I was in a relationship that I felt like was taking away from my dreams because I was so concerned about giving them the time they needed that I, I wasn't happy with myself. And that's typically what would happen. I would find myself in this predicament that we're talking about right now and i'd be like oh shit i mean she's complaining because i'm doing this i'm not spending time here of this and that and then it would be just like and then i would see the business start to fall apart because i'm trying to because i'm trying to spend more time over here and then i realized like fuck this isn't working and this is so in, like that was ingrained in me. that was so important to me it's so important to me that i get to a certain point or i build this thing and so i realized like okay this wasn't the right woman for me and that was kind of this pattern that i was always in and now being with Katrina and how long we've been together now, I realize that uh, I'm okay with that. And that was an important process for me to go through in my 20s because the woman that that settled me down you know, completely was, was the one that actually enhanced all this process and, and helped me find balance in my life. And you know, I, I've accomplished more, I've built more, I've been more successful in the last six years uh, with her than I ever have with any other woman. And she, and on top of that, she gets more of my time than any other woman that I've ever been with. And a lot of that I attribute to her helping me and teaching me and aiding me in finding balance in my life. She, uh, for this weekend, it's a perfect example. I just talked earlier in the episode about going to see my best friends. She knows how important that is to my overall health and well-being. Those people are like family to me. And when I don't see them for a long period of time, which can happen to me because I'm so driven, uh, I, I, I suffer. I become irritable. Um, it's like it's like I need that time. Just like if you guys were taken away from your kids for yeah, a long period sure. of time, how irritable you guys probably get and how frustrating it is and how you know you need that time. So she recognizes that in me. And instead of fighting for my time and making me feel guilty for not giving her enough time, she helps me organize a lot of these things. So it was her who booked this weekend for me to take off to my friends. I had nothing to do with it. She just knows how important it is. She knows my schedule better than anybody else. And then she puts that in there. So she's helped me teach or she's helped teach me 
how to do that. And then I've also go, going piggybacking off of what Justin said, as far as creating kind of these these boundaries and things. Well, I, I've learned, and I feel like an old man saying this. I hate this <laughs> saying this, but you know, I have we have to schedule. We have to we mm-hmm. schedule time for each other, and you know, we have certain rules. It's that, funny that people even yeah. think that's ridiculous. You no. schedule everything else. It's so important. Oh it, my god. It, yeah, and you know, and I don't think I would have realized that until I got into my thirties, <laughs> and 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 life became so busy and things like that. I would have never thought that I had to schedule you know romantic time with my girl. And it's not like romantic time. You know, we don't quote unquote. We don't say that. It just um, turns like into that. Knowing it, each it, other it natu- biblically. Right. You're, all, it, it, you're all, babe, I got yeah. that four o'clock blowjob schedule. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you... Right. Yeah. Right. It doesn't bring, look bring like that. Pads, but what I, what, what I found is that, you know, when, when we stick to some of our rules, and for example, here's a couple things that we we do, right? So one of those is the, the turning of the electronics off by seven o'clock, right? That allows her, her no and I... No more electronical. Right. No more electronicals past 7 p.m. So from 7 p.m. till 10 or 11, which is normally what time we fall asleep, you know, it's her and I, whether we're watching a show of ours or reading a book together or just conversing with each other, that just setting those rules and boundaries automatically has created a, a stronger relationship. Mm-hmm. Then on top of that, there not a week goes by that Katrina and I do not have a date night. More, most weeks we have multiple date nights. We make time for each other. And I, fa- I have found that once we implemented that into our relationship that, hey, you know, Friday or Sunday, whatever, it doesn't fucking matter what day it is. That's our, that's our day together. That's our night together. No matter what the rest of the world fucking shuts down. We we're not connected to anybody else. We're only connected to each other for that night. And it's normally a sushi night or something like that. We go out to dinner or watch a movie of ours, or again, come back and read a book that we enjoy. But once we made that a habit and a routine, uh, it became very natural for us. We always stay connected and then we built upon it and you know that we end up having other nights where we're, we're doing things. Nothing has connected me more though in the last 30 something years than the the reading together. And I know I've dropped that that on this on this podcast more than once and I cannot stress it enough. What a game changer. It's, you guys are learning together. Oh, that's what it is. It's it, not exactly. necessarily even the, the reading. No. That's just a, a way of doing it. 100%. 100%. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it is. And we're not, just so people know, we're not literally like passing a book back and forth and reading to each other, even though you could do that. We're listening to an audio book together. So it's just us sitting in a room together, listening to something that neither one of us have ever heard before that is typically in empowering or bettering us somehow. And then it creates dialogue. Many times... We only listen for like 20 minutes because if there's something really cool that the book talks about, we'll normally pause it and then all of a sudden it creates dialogue between her and I for the next two hours yeah. mm-hmm. and then it eventually leads to incredible sex. And it's yeah. just like this <laughs> natural progression that nothing, oh, so great. nothing's I, forced about it, yeah. you know, but, it, but if it wasn't for us scheduling that and we, so for us, we set a goal at the beginning of the year. Many of you that have been listening to the podcast for a long time know that I set a one book a month goal. And she set the same goal for herself. So together we read. And then in addition, I'm reading on my own, but I know for sure that at the bare minimum, her and I are going to accomplish a book a month. And if we, when we set that simple goal, it then holds us accountable to a minimum of one day a week that we have to put in about an hour or two of reading. And that knocks out about a book. So, you know, I I thought that all the way through when I set that goal for us, and it's done incredible things for our relationship. And it's just as simple as scheduling that time out for us to to do something together. And like you said, Sal, learning together promotes this this growth in our relationship that's incredible. And it's it's been a game changer for me. Yeah, I think too with like the experiences, because I remember that that reminds me of when Courtney and I um we were both learning music together. She learned piano. I was trying to enhance my guitar. And we would go to the same teacher, like it was a, um, it was a, um, a husband and a wife combo. And so she would go with the wife, I go with the husband. We would both kind of learn, and then it, it all built up to to like a piece. Like we would play it together, and mm-hmm. like she had never learned piano before. And so it was just a very very cool thing that we would, you know, we we kind of had that, and it was something that we could talk about. It was something that you know we shared experience with. But yeah, you're right. It's it's a very powerful thing to, you know, if that's something where relationship wise, you know, you might feel like a lull, uh, you know, look into that, look into reading together, look into, you know, experiencing something um, if for you, the first time. That, if you, that helps your entrepreneurship even. I mean, yeah. you're, you're learning something oh, cool. Huh, oh, it can help you on that oh, side. Every, totally. like, K- Katrina and I, are, I mean, like we're doing Blue Ocean Strategy right now. It's 100% business. Every book that we read, either one 
is is uh, in bettering us business wise, uh, relationship wise, leadership wise. I mean, everything. So and the business or personal growth? Yeah, right? Both yeah, growth. Both, yeah. It's all growth related, and I and I love, and we've now been doing it long enough too that we will definitely we ch- we'll read books that challenge both of our philosophies and ideologies too, which is fucking really cool, you know. So when you get to the next level with your partner and so that. You know, try reading some shit that maybe you both one of you thinks one way and the other one thinks the other way, and you and you read that shit and then watch the dialogue that happens between that. Talk about a really really cool uh, scenario. I thought that that we just recently a couple of books ago we read Sex at Dawn and a very very um, polarizing type of book <laughs> and you know definitely challenges a lot of the way we've 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 thought for many many years so you know and she thinks one way i think another way but at the end of the day it, it's not about one of us being right or wrong it's about us both sharing our feelings and our thoughts and you know we both learn new things about each other about what makes me tick and think this way and what makes her t- tick and yeah, think that way deeper. oh absolutely yeah. so i can't stress that enough and it will bleed into your entrepreneurship and It also, I think if you're somebody who is very, very passionate about building businesses and things like that, like myself, you know, it will weed out all the other girls or guys. I don't know if there's a guy or girl asking this question. It'll weed out the opposite sex that has no business being there with you anyways. And you'll, you'll eventually get to the one that, that is like you or cares about similar things for sure. Excellent. Check it out. Go to YouTube, subscribe to Mind Pump TV. You got to see the video we just posted. Holy cow. Hold your pants on. It's crazy. Also, go to mindpumpmedia.com and register for 30 days of coaching. It's going to cost you exactly zero dollars. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.